Hello students, welcome to this channel. If you are looking to memorize many words for a competitive exam, you have come to the right place. You can learn many words in a short duration of time. One thing that I can assure you is that it is a very scientific method. All the pronunciation of the word is the same as per the international level. If you want to see these words in a flashcard format, we have already developed a platform and a mobile app. You can easily access these words as per your convenience. Now, let us discuss these words. First, look at the meaning and then try to make a broader picture in your mind. To abase something or someone is to humiliate them, no, more than just humiliate them. If you abase another person you are bringing them low, humbling them in a mean, base manner. Not nice at all. Although a bash sounds like a big party or what firefighters do to get through a locked door, a bash is, in fact, a verb that means you have caused another person to feel awkward, bashful, embarrassed, or ashamed. An abattoir is a slaughterhouse or a place where animals are killed. It's not a word you're likely to hear or use unless you're involved in these activities. Sometimes someone in power might decide to give up that power and step down from his or her position. When they do that, they abdicate their authority, giving up all duties and perks of the job. Use the adjective aberrant to describe unusual conduct. Sitting in a bathtub and singing show tunes all day long might be considered aberrant behavior. Abetment can be defined as the act of helping or encouraging someone to do something wrong or illegal. An abeyance is a temporary halt to something, with the emphasis on temporary. It is usually used with the word in or into, in abeyance suggests a state of waiting or holding. If you abhor something, it gives you a feeling of complete hatred. Chances are you abhor that kid who used to torture the frogs in biology class. If it reeks of humiliation or looks like the lowest of lows, then you can safely describe it as abject. Abjure means to swear off, and it applies to something you once believed. You can abjure a religious faith, you can abjure your love of another person, and you can abjure the practice of using excessive force in interrogation. An ablution is a washing or a cleaning of oneself, for personal hygiene, or a ritual washing or cleaning associated with religious observance. When you purposely deny yourself something, especially in favor of the needs of others, you would describe this act as an abnegation. This has to be your choice, not the choice of others, so it's not abnegation when your parents don't let you stay out all night. Your abode is where you live. The Queen of England's abode may be far from humble, but it's the home where she rests her weary crown at the end of each day. To abolish is to get rid of or annul. So when the principal yells at you for the 100th time for not having your shirt tucked in, it's safe to wish they just abolished the silly dress code. Abominable is as bad as it gets. So if the food at camp is abominable, the campers might start to shout, Ick! Ick! Your stew is making us sick. The native, indigenous people of a country are often called aboriginals. In Canada, the First Nations, Inuits and Métis, would be considered aboriginals. Did you ever start something and not finish it? If so, that was an abortive project. Abortive things don't get finished. What does an obnoxious person have in common with sandpaper? Both are abrasive. Anything that grates or irritates, physically or metaphorically, can be described using this adjective. So the editor wants to cut your epic 800-page history of the stapler to a 150-page summary instead. Don't cry, he just wants to abridge your masterpiece, trimming it down to the more readable essential elements. Abrogate means to abolish or avoid. When someone cuts in front of you in line, they are abrogating your right to be the next one served. When you cut in line, you are abrogating your responsibility to those who were in line before you. Abscission means the cutting off or removal of something, like an unsightly mole on the chin. Abscond is to escape, often taking something along. As a kid, 
You may have absconded from your lemonade stand, with the coffee can of cash in hand, and your bewildered sister still filling cups for your customers. Use absolute as a noun or an adjective and you're so sure of something that you know it will never change. For example, a devout person's belief in life after death is an absolute, that person has absolute faith in the afterlife. To be absolved is to be let off the hook, to be set free from a certain obligation or to be forgiven for a wrongdoing. The church may absolve you of your sins, but that won't absolve you of the need to attend Mass. If you abstain from something, you restrain yourself from consuming it. People usually abstain from things that are considered vices, like eating French fries every day for lunch. Use the adjective abstract for something that is not a material object or is general and not based on specific examples. Abstruse things are difficult to understand because they are so deep and intellectually challenging. It might be hard to figure out how a toilet flushes, but the technology that goes into making the internet function is abstruse. If you want to say something is really, really bad, then call it abysmal. If one person shows up to your party, well then that is an abysmal turnout. The 1958 Ford Edsel? An abysmal failure. If you exceed, it means you agree with someone or give in to his or her wish. The word is often used in a political context, the queen acceded to the prince's demands for more territory, a larger army, and funnier jesters. You know you've hit it big when you earn acclaim or enthusiastic approval. And when you have achieved critical acclaim, even the grouchy critics approve of you. A knight being honored with the tap of a sword blade was the earliest form of accolade. Today, an accolade is more than a way to bestow knighthood, it is a form of praise or an award. An accomplice is a cooperator or participator, commonly in criminal acts. So you're an accomplice to the gas station robbery if you distracted the store manager while your partner in crime raided the registers for cash. An accord is an agreement between groups or even nations, like a formal peace accord that prevents war or the accord between you and your sister specifying who gets to use the car on which days. If you charge someone with misdeeds or misconduct, you accuse that person. If the last piece of devil's food cake is missing, your sister may accuse you of eating it, especially if you have chocolate on your mouth. When something is at the very peak of perfection, reach for this noun from Greek, acme. A brilliant violinist might reach the acme of her career, but eventually she might become unstrung. To acquit someone is to clear them of charges. Acquitting also has to do with how you carry or present yourself. Say you move to a country where everyone cooks with lots of hot peppers. At first the food scalds your tongue, but over time you adapt, you change in a way that allows you to deal with the new circumstances. Are you looking for another word to describe a person who is highly skilled, very proficient or expert at something? Try the adjective adept. Adolescent is just a fancy word for teenager, someone who is no longer a child but is not yet an adult. The word can also be used as an adjective. For example, a particular clothing line might be geared toward adolescent girls. Adulteration can be defined as the action of making something poorer in quality by the addition of another substance. Adultery is a word for cheating, cheating on your spouse with another person. Adultery isn't a crime, but some people consider it a sin. Steer clear of anything adverse. If it's adverse, it's working against you, like adverse weather conditions or the adverse effects of eating too much sugar. The aftermath of a car crash might include a broken fender, a sprained rib, and a lecture from a police officer. The consequences of an unpleasant event make up its aftermath. Would you be aghast or shocked? to find out that your friends believe in ghosts, or would you share their frightened, or aghast, looks when a floating white being hovers over the campfire. On water skis she was agile and made sharp turns and long arcs cutting through the water, but she was a lot less agile on the snowboard, landing on her face and hands as she clunked down the slopes. The noun agony means acute pain, either mental or physical, but people often use the word hyperbolically, 
this paper cut is agony. An aisle is a passageway, often between seating areas or shelves. Brides and grooms walk down an aisle at weddings, while you might head to the cookie aisle in the supermarket. If you're an alchemist, then you try to change common metals into gold. People have been trying to figure that out for a long time, so you might need to have another job to finance your career as an alchemist. When a couple gets divorced, the court might order the one spouse to pay alimony to the other, which is like an allowance for basic expenses like food and shelter. An altar is a raised area in a house of worship where people can honor God with offerings. It is prominent in the Bible as God's table, a sacred place for sacrifices and gifts offered up to God. Altercation is a nicer word for quarrel, which is a nicer word for fight. Look to the adjective ambiguous when you need to describe something that's open to more than one interpretation, like the headline, Squad Helps Dog Bite Victim. If your friends want to try skydiving and you're amenable to the idea, sounds like you're going to be jumping out of a plane. If a person or thing is amenable to something, they are ready, willing, or responsive. A friendly, pleasant person could be described as amiable. Airline flight attendants tend to be amiable. The people monitoring the school's cafeteria? Maybe not. Angst is a feeling of anxiety and frustration that isn't specific. People often feel angst about the state of the world or about the state of their homework. The noun anguish refers to severe physical or emotional pain or distress. A trip to the dentist might cause a cavity-prone person a lot of anguish. When you annotate, you write critical explanations to add extra insight about something. These explanations can be necessary to understanding writings in which the language might be difficult to make sense of without clarification. If you don't know who wrote a poem, the author is anonymous. If you don't know who donated a gift to a museum, it's called an anonymous gift from an anonymous donor. Anonymous means a person unknown. An antecedent is a thing that comes before something else. You might think rap music has no historical antecedent, but earlier forms of African-American spoken verse go back for centuries. Use the noun apathy and someone isn't interested in the important things that are happening. You might feel apathy for the political process after watching candidates bicker tediously with one another. Something that is appalling is awful or horrible, causing dismay or disgust. It's definitely not appealing. Appeasement is the act of calming something down. A candy bar might give your hunger temporary appeasement, but eventually you'll need a real meal. Archives, a noun, refers to records or historical documents, or the place where those records are kept, like the famous writer's archives that scholars can see by visiting the library archives. If you're argumentative, you have a tendency to quarrel or squabble. An argumentative classmate always finds a reason to disagree with the teacher's viewpoint. To articulate is to say something. And, if you say it well, someone might praise you by saying you are articulate. Confused yet? It's all in the pronunciation. Asceticism is rigorous self-denial, particularly the rejection of the pleasures of the world. If you don't drink, smoke, eat sugar, see movies, use the internet, or have a cell phone, then you are already practicing a kind of asceticism. An assault is an attack. Getting punched, yelled at, or bombed are all types of assault. An asset is something you have that is positive. It can mean a piece of property, a piece of equipment, an ability, or even a quality. Atrocities, acts of outrageous cruelty, are often committed during wars and armed conflicts. Attenuate is a verb that means to make or become weaker. The effects of aging may be attenuated by exercise, or by drinking from the fountain of youth. Attrition is a gradual process of wearing down, weakening, or destroying something. Do you need to make something bigger, better, or stronger? Then you need to augment it. To augment is to increase the amount or strength of something. 
August is not just the eighth month of the year, it also describes something esteemed or regal. The 200-year-old newspaper covering the royal wedding might be called an August institution. You know that intangible glow, that certain magical something that your mom gives off? Get your glasses fixed and you'll see the aura emanating from her head isn't her special powers, just your bad eyes. To be averse to something is to be opposed to it on moral, philosophical or aesthetic grounds, my father is averse to people smoking cigarettes in the house, but he would not be averse to your smoking a cigar. Describe something that is exceptionally bad as awful, but be careful, saying your mom's cooking is awful may be truthful, but it's also likely to get you a frying pan upside the head. To babble is to talk on and on without a particular goal. It might drive you crazy when your little sister babbles endlessly about her favorite video game. The ancient Roman god Bacchus was no teetotaler. A Bacchanalian party is a wild, wine-soaked, rowdy affair. Bacchanalian is used to describe any event that Bacchus would have enjoyed. The meaning of backbite can be defined as talk maliciously about someone who is not present. Badger is to bother. Persistently. On and on. Without stop. Relentlessly. Over and over. Endlessly. It comes from the name of that chipmunk-like animal that burrows into the ground. Stiff corporate types don't tend to be too fond of badinage or playful conversation during important meetings, but sometimes a witty joke about the manager's ugly tie is just the right thing to lighten the mood. To baffle is to confuse. If you are completely puzzled as to what baffle means, you might say that this word baffles you. People who go fishing aren't the only ones to use bait. When you hold a yard sale, place your best stuff closest to the sidewalk, to serve as bait. Bait can be anything from the worms that hide a hook to a stereo that tempts shoppers to stop and browse. Baleful means the foreshadowing of tragic or evil events. If no one's listening in class and your teacher reprimands you with a baleful glance, expect a pop quiz. If you balk at your mother's suggestion that you take on more responsibility, you're saying no to added chores. To balk means to refuse, to go along with. Tourists who flock from Minnesota to Florida in the wintertime are hoping for balmy weather, that is, those frosty Midwesterners are trading mountains of snow and freezing winds for warm sun and gentle breezes. The noun bane refers to anything that is a cause of harm, ruin, or death. But we often use it for things that aren't that bad, just feel like it. You might say mosquitoes are the bane of your existence. Good friends usually banter back and forth easily, like they're trying to keep a step ahead of each other in witty responses. This type of banter is their special language of friendship. Whether it is a spike on the wire atop a security fence or a mean remark someone said about you, a barb can hurt. When you encounter either kind of barb, you should stay away. Things that are barbaric, are uncivilized and brutal. People have different opinions about hunting, for some, it's a way of life, and for others it's barbaric. If you've heard the word bard, it was probably in English class. William Shakespeare has been known as the Bard since the 19th century, but the word has a much older history, and, when it's not capitalized, it simply means lyric poet. If masked means hidden, barefaced means unconcealed. If you get caught speeding and reach into your wallet and hand the officer $20, that's a barefaced attempt at a bribe. Something Baroque is overly ornate, like a paisley red velvet jacket with tassels, or music that has a lot going on and might include a harpsichord. A barrage is something that comes quickly and heavily, as an attack of bullets or artillery, or a fast spray of words. A beeline is the swiftest, most direct route between two points. If you are shopping at the mall on a weekend afternoon and you see an empty parking space, you should make a beeline for it or risk circling the lot for hours. To beget means to generate something, usually children, and it can be used to refer to the role of either a mother or a father. To begrudge someone for something is to wish them ill for it or to envy them. 
Try not to begrudge his getting the promotion over you, he's been at the company longer. To beguile is to entertain and convince by flattery. Someone who beguiles is tricky and often charming, like when a smooth-talking friend tries to beguile you into giving them your allowance. You can call both a Tyrannosaurus Rex and a massive telecommunications company a behemoth. The word means something big and powerful. Behest is an authoritative command or request. If your boss or principal asks to see you, you go to their office at their behest. If you want to practice these words as multiple choice questions, you can find the guidelines in the description. If you want to play games with these words and want to access the flashcards, you can get the detailed information in the description box. If you want to remember these words for a long duration of time, always revise these words at least seven to eight times. You can learn these words easily provided you burn the midnight oil. Feel free to like, subscribe and share this video. It really boosts our confidence. Have a nice day.